Now let's take some time to talk about the thickness curve. So on the left hand side we have a plot of the thickness or the t over c. On the right side we have the thickness over r. And t over r is just this black line here plotted along with this blue line that's t over c. And t over c is the part that you're actually driving with these parameters. Now your thickness is driven for the entire propeller blade, you get to choose your thickness distribution. It used to be that the way the propeller component was built up is it picked airfoils as you went along under the cross-section tab. And it turned out that when you linearly loft the thickness between those sections, there's usually a discontinuity, or at best there's a little bit of ringing when you put several cross-sections really close together. And to alleviate that, we made it so that the thickness would drive everything, so you can get a nice smooth transition through all of those cross sections, even if you have several really close together. Now, there's an important distinction that because we implement the thickness here, under the cross section tab, you'll notice that we have no access whatsoever to the height and width of an ellipse, nor do we have access to things like the thickness to chord ratio of this 1 6 series. And the reason for that is because the blade design curves are controlling everything. The chord curve is setting your chord distribution, your thickness to chord is setting it there. So notice here that we have this cross section placed at 40% R, but under our blade, we don't have a control point there. There's one at 30% and 60%. So what OpenVSP is doing is it's automatically calculating what it should be based on that value right there and it is automatically applying it to this value and renaming the NACA series. It's doing all of this stuff automatically for you, which is really amazing. But a thing to watch out for, similar to how we've seen that you can adjust the thickness to chord ratio of an airfoil file. Let's watch what happens if we try and read an airfoil file into this propeller. Let's go to cross section details and apply this NACA 63212. So we know that this should have a 12% T over C, but what's being applied is a 14.4. And that is again because the thickness curve is driving that. And the assumption here is that you apply this cross section, and if you absolutely want it to be a 63212, all you have to do is make sure that where it's located, say at 0.4, has a value of 12%. And now that airfoil file has the appropriate shape. So if you want it to match, make sure that you have a control point with the appropriate T over C at that value. If we go back and check, sure enough, here we have 12% T over C for this airfoil. So be aware that that control exists. And if you absolutely want to enforce a certain airfoil type with an airfoil file on a propeller, that you must make sure that the thickness is set appropriately and that it's not modifying it.